Hello, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and I'm returning once again with another presentation regarding the mushrooms of Saskatchewan and the ways in which we go about identifying and picking those mushrooms. So today, we're going to be looking at a group of mushrooms that are often just walked past from, with mushroom pickers. Uh, these are the waxy caps of Saskatchewan. So, the genre that we will be looking at here will be Cufophilus and Hygrophorus. Now, what are waxy caps? So, these are mushrooms that have either a waxy coating on either the cap or the gills, or else they have uh, a slime coat or a mucus veil over the gills. These are often overlooked, as I've said, by mushroom pickers for various reasons. Uh, one of those reasons is they often just don't know what the heck they're looking at uh, because they're not commonly picked, most of these. So it's just almost like a junk mushroom or else it's covered in this mucousy slime and people are like, why would anybody ever eat that? Well, people do. The majority of the mushrooms here that are uh, eaten are done so usually uh, in in various locales where a specific uh, wax gap is just known locally to be edible and and picked in that manner but they're not widely picked so to speak so the first mushroom that we're going to look at is very interesting this is the metal wax cap it is Cufophilus pretensis it's actually quite a beautiful mushroom too the cap is peach to salmon to orange in color. Uh, when I say salmon, if you s saw that prior photo, I would call that salmon. Right there. So, convex, they become depressed with maturity. As you see that starting to happen there, there's a bit of a dip in the center as those uh, margins start to turn upwards. Uh, it is smooth if you run your finger across it to slightly waxy or even tacky, a little bit sticky. Uh, the margin is smooth to lightly striate. You can see that light striation there uh, around the perimeter of the, the uh, cap. Uh, it becomes wavy with age and uh, becomes deeply upturned um, as, 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 as it gets past maturity there. These grow up to about four inches in diameter. They're usually a bit smaller than that. Here's a size reference for you. Very interesting looking gills there too. Now those gills are cream in color. They are somewhat decurrent. They're not running really deep down the stipe, but they are uh, turning downwards on the stipe. Uh, they are very distant and there are short gills present. So between each gill, you see one tiny little short gill, maybe two. Um, some of the gills are actually forked. And you'll see that more towards the base of the gills. And if you look on the left-hand side, you can see one of those gills forked there too, about halfway up. So not all of them forked, but some of them are forked, which is kind of an odd attribute here. Uh, and this produces white spores. There's a white spore print for you. The stipes themselves are cream to salmon to orange. So a nice little blend of colors there. They are cylindrical to clavate. Uh, you can see the one on the left looks very cylindrical. The one on the right is more clavate. It's got more of a wider base. They have a central attachment to the cap. They are about five inches high and one inch wide. And as you can see there, the two stipes look like they were even connecting and forming a central mass. So these do clump together. Uh, the ecological role of these is unknown. They are now thought to be symbiotically associated with moss, certain moss species. Uh, they are terrestrial and found in old growth forests where that moss occurs. Uh, they are gregarious sometimes clumping together, near found spring through fall. Now, an interesting story about this mushroom. Uh, this mushroom is also found in Europe, but in Europe, uh, it grows in grasslands. And in Saskatchewan, it grows in woodlands. 
And the only thing linking those two, because people are like, why, why, why is that happening? Because it is the same species. But the only things linking those two seem to be moss. Uh, and that's why it's now thought to, to have its association with species of moss as opposed to trees or some other factor. Or one of the reasons, if I am correct, I do believe I am. Uh, so the edibility of this mushroom is choice. Uh, they are good in most dishes. Uh, they are commercially collected and sold in Europe. I must have been drunk when I wrote all this because there's so many typos in this one. And then these are for intermediate mushroom pickers. And if you look on the picture on the right hand side, you can see this one is actually occurring in a grassland. So the next species we're going to be looking at, and every species from here on in will be a hygrophorous species. They are very um, common in Saskatchewan. This is the gold flecked wood wax, Hygrophorus chrysodon, another beautiful looking mushroom. So that cap is white with gold overlay, becoming more yellow with age. And you can see that happening there. They're quite expanded, these caps already, and they're very yellow. Uh, the ones we just looked at here would be that gold overlay that you can see kind of at the margins and kind of flecked in there. Um, they are convex, flattening with age. The cuticle, that, that would be the outer layer up top, is smooth with a slimy coating. Uh, it has an inrolled margin and that is coated with gold granules. Shouldn't say inrolled, I should say downrolled. That's more what it looks like there. But even at flat, you can see they're angling downwards. Uh, these grow up to about three inches in diameter. Here are some young ones and a size reference for that. Here are the gills and I'll just make a quick mention, you can see those gold flecks on the margin parts there as well as at the apex of that uh, stipe. So the gills are white in color, they are adnate or slightly decurrent. You can see they're kind of slightly decurrent there. Uh, they are close together to sub-distance, not quite distant, but they're getting there. Uh, there are short gills present, there aren't crazy amounts, but there are some. Uh, they have a waxy feel. There's a waxy coating on these if you were to run your finger across them and then rub your fingers together. And they have a white spore print. The stipe is white, again, with that sort of gold inlay, sort of like the gold flecking and gold streaking. And then it is gold at the apex. Cylindrical to fusiform in shape. If you remember, fusiform is where it is thickest in the center and then tapering at the base and the apex. And uh, the apex is coated with gold granules, as we've already seen. It has a central attachment to the cap. Uh, it is sheathed in a slime coating. And then it's up to about four inches high and a half inch thick. There you can see very clearly that gold flecking. But you can also see some drops of liquid on there. That would be the slime. These are mycorrhizal with conifers. They are terrestrial. They are found summer through fall. They are solitary to gregarious, so you might just find one, you might find a bunch. They're not very common in Saskatchewan, um, as a lot of the wood waxes seem to be. Uh, they, they appear some years, other years not. Uh, their edibility is relatively poor. Uh, they have an unpleasant odor. They are also quite slimy, so you have to wash that slime off before before you eat them or cook them. Taste is very mild, um, again, for intermediate mushroom pickers. So if you want to try, go ahead. It won't hurt you, but uh, it's not something to go out of your way to look for. Here's another one. This is the ivory wood wax, Hygrophorus eburneus. This one, unlike the last one, is very common everywhere in Saskatchewan where there are uh, trees, it seems. Uh, this is uh, also known as the cowboy's handkerchief. It's a disgusting name, but here's why. Uh, white in color, sometimes developing beige in the center with age. Convex, flattening out with a slight umbo. The cuticle is smooth and covered with a thick slime veil. It's almost like somebody took uh, the cap of a nice white mushroom and sneezed into it. Uh, it has a smooth margin. I mean, what else can you call it when it's that slick with slime? Uh, it's up to three inches in diameter. Here's a size reference for you. 
The gills are white in color. They are adnate or decurrent. This one, they're adnate. Uh, when, if they were decurrent, you'd see them kind of curling down if they had a decurrent tooth. Uh, the short gills are present once again. They're not super numerous, but they are present. And there's a white spore print coming off of this mushroom. The stipe itself is white, cylindrical to fusiform. If you look on the right hand side, that is a cylindrical stipe. On the left, you see it's fusiform. It's bulging out in the middle and then tapering towards the base and the apex. Uh, it has a central attachment to the cap. And then these become hollow with age. Often that's the case with mushrooms that can be fusiform as well. As they hollow out with age, they sort of poof out a bit with uh, air in the center. And then it's up to about four inches high and an inch thick. These are mycorrhizal with hardwoods. Um, I find them often around birch and aspen. Uh, they are terrestrial, they are solitary to scattered, and they are found late summer through fall. They are poor edibles. That thick mucousy slime discourages picking. However, you can remove the slime before you cook it. If you have a way to remove it when you're picking, if you're expecting to encounter these, you know, it, just bring a rag and that will greatly increase your desire to eat these when they don't have slime on them. And these are for advanced mushroom pickers, primarily because they have a lookalikes here. So that's Hygrophorus eburneus on the left, that is Clytocybe phyllophylla on the right. Clytocybe phyllophylla is the frosted funnel mushroom. It is potentially lethal. They are about the same size. Uh, beware, there will be some talk about Clytocybe phyllophylla in the uh, future presentations regarding toxic mushrooms. Here's another one, a Clytocybe dilbata on the right hand side. White Clytocybes can be fatal. This is one is uh, very, very dangerous and again, fairly common. Next mushroom. This is the Herald of Winter, Hygrophorus hypothesis. This is a late fall species. A very beautiful species and it's uh, one that is often not picked because people don't see them. They're often under leaf litter or, or pine duff or whatever it is that happens to obscure them because they occur right before winter and often people have given up mushroom picking by that point in time. So the cap is dark brown in the center and then olive brown and streaked throughout and then it kind of has this yellowish band around the margin. You can see that there looking down on that profile. Uh, these are convex, flattening out and developing a bit of a central depression. You can see that as well. Uh, the cuticle is smooth and it is covered with a thick slime veil. You can see that very clearly there. Uh, the margin is also smooth, sometimes becoming wavy with age. And that margin often remains downturned and these grow up to about three inches in diameter. One thing you haven't seen so far is any sort of partial veil. Um, some of them may have that uh, later on in this presentation, but really it's that slime that can cover and protect those gills. Uh, so here's a size reference for you, not a very big mushroom. Nice big long stipe there. The gills are pale yellow, becoming tan with age. They are adnate or decurrent. You can see this one is starting to get decurrent there. So when we say adnate or decurrent, that decurrent would be better described as a decurrent tooth. I think some, some experts use that terminology. Uh, they are distant from each other. Short gills are present and often very, very short. You can see they're almost like little short teeth. Um, they're, they're almost absent. If you run your finger across the gills, once again, you'll get a waxy sort of feel. They have a waxy coating to them. And these produce white spores. The stipes are pale yellow, becoming off-white near the apex. You can see that there. They are cylindrical to rooting. And on the left-hand side, we see one that is rooting. It's becoming very much tapered towards the base. Uh, these are fibrillose. They've got this sort of kind of shaggy scaling to them that's 
upraised in a way that um, it's almost reminiscent of fibers, like carpet fibers, say. Uh, it has a central attachment to that, to, to that cap, and these grow up to about four inches high and a half inch thick. Uh, in terms of ecology, these are mycorrhizal with pine trees. You'll find these in areas with jack pine especially. They are terrestrial, scattered to gregarious, and these are found very late fall. You could look for these around the end of September and October. Their edibility is relatively poor. Slime discourages pickers, so you got to remove that slime before or during picking. Um, intermediate mushroom pickers is really not a whole lot you're going to confuse this with if you do find it. Certainly not a whole lot growing at that time. Uh, the next one here is a bit of a bigger mushroom. This is a veiled purple wood wax, Hygrophorus purpurescens. Very pretty mushroom. So it has pink to purple, streaked with red, kind of getting lighter towards the margins there, uh, more pinkish. It is convex, flattening out with age and becoming depressed in the center as it does so. Uh, the cuticle is fibrous and it is sticky or slimy to the touch. So it's almost like if you were touching like say velvet or something but then somebody dumped or took a sneeze into it, uh, dumped some slime on there. Uh, the margin is smooth becoming wavy with age. Like I said these are a bit larger they grow up to about four inches in diameter. Not huge but a nice size for the table certainly similar to like a large button mushroom in its size. The gills are white, developing pinkish spots. They are adnate or they love that decurrent tooth like you're seeing occurring there. Uh, they're close together as opposed to the distant ones that we've seen up till now. The short gills are fairly frequent and it has again the same waxy feel. And these are covered actually with a thin partial veil when young that is in addition to the slime. And then these have a, a white spore print. These are off-white streaked with a pale purple or pink. I don't know what you would really describe that color because it seems almost brown as well. Um, the stipe is cylindrical or once again rooting, though I probably should have said fusiform too because that young one in the center there is clearly fusiform. Uh, dry so no, uh, no slime on the stipe. They have a central attachment to the cap and they're up to about four inches high and they're a bit thicker at one inch in terms of their thickness as you can see there as well. Uh, these are mycorrhizal with conifers. They are terrestrial, they are solitary to gregarious so a lot of variability there. These are found late summer through fall. There you can see how um, exaggerated that margin and central depression can be uh, on that one there. Looks more like a cup. And usually you would, mushrooms that take on that appearance, what they're trying to do is fill themselves with water during rainfall. And every time a, a drop of rain hits that water in there, it shakes the whole mushroom and knocks the spores out. And then eventually it just kind of cascades and water falls down. Uh, the edibility is poor. The slime, once again, discourages picking. So if you remove that slime and you don't mind just uh, taking a few uh, seconds to remove the slime, then this probably goes up to about good, right? But most people uh, just don't take the time for it. These are for intermediate mushroom pickers because you're not going to confuse it for much else beyond this one. This is the pink modeled wood wax, uh, the Hygrophorus rasala. And you remember that Rosella, uh is also the name of a genus. There is no actual connection. Rosella just means red. Uh, so pink mottled wood wax. That's what we're looking at here. Another very pretty mushroom. It's red or pink for the cap, often mottled or streaked with cream, darker at the center, and then has the cream ring around the margin that you can clearly see there. These are convex, flattening out and sometimes developing a central depression, other times retaining that little umbo. Uh, you can see these ones are retaining the umbo. Uh, the cuticle is smooth or velvety. It is slimy when young, but drying out by maturity. So that's, that's a, a, a difference 
that greatly um, increases how often this mushroom is picked because this one is actually picked more often than others it seems um, because this one becomes dry at maturity the slime is gone after after the uh, youthful period so the margin is smooth and enrolled when young sometimes becoming wavy with age these bruise yellow in color and they're up to about five inches in diameter and you can see uh, some of the size references here this is quite a big mushroom It's a nice solid one too. Fairly common in Saskatchewan. The gills are white, becoming pink with age and developing red spots. Uh, it is adnate or decurrent. This one you can see is adnate. Uh, close together in terms of the gills. Short gills are present. It has a waxy feel and a white spore print. The stipe is white, becoming pink with age. You can kind of see that happening at the base there going upwards. Uh, cylindrical, solid, central attachment up to four inches high, fairly thick again, one inch thick. Uh, mycorrhizal with hardwoods. This is a terrestrial mushroom. It is scattered to gregarious. Uh, so you don't find this in like the solitary way that you find a lot of the other ones, nor is it uncommon. Um, this one will form fairy rings. These are found summer through fall. Their edibility is pretty good, mainly because it's less slimy than other wood waxes. It doesn't taste that bad. They're for intermediate mushroom pickers because you're not going to really confuse this for much else. Now here's a beautiful species for you. This is larch, the larch wood wax, Hygrophorus speciosus. Any guesses on what this grows under? We'll talk about that later. So the cap is red to reddish orange, becoming bright yellow with age. So it actually goes through a significant color change. You can see that starting to occur more around the margin area. It's still very red in the center, but you can see it's almost like somebody has given somehow um, this red a yellow undertone without it just being flat out orange. It's very, very unique and very beautiful in that sense. Um, this is convex or companulate. I'm going to see if we see any companulate prior. No. I'll try to point it out if I see it. Uh, and these flatten out, and so they sometimes they'll retain that small umbo up top. That's that's something that you see in companulate mushrooms, which is like a bell shape. Uh, sometimes these also become uh, depressed in the center. So we're looking at a lot of variability there. The cuticle is smooth and sticky. And as you can see there, I would say somewhat slimy. Uh, the margin is smooth and enrolled when young, and these grow up to about two inches in diameter. So a fairly small mushroom. You can see a size reference there. And just to go back to that companulate, the one that's uh, vertical with the stipe still attached, that's a fairly companulate mushroom. It's got that bell shape. So those gills here are cream to pale yellow. They're adnate to decurrent. That is actually even more decurrent than a tooth. That's, that's full on decurrent there. Uh, it is fairly distantly spaced between the gills. Uh, the short gills are present. There's one looks like between each gill, so not very um, frequent, but, but present. Waxy feel, white spore print, kind of what we'd expect from a mushroom called a wood wax. Uh, so the cream, stipe becomes pale orange or yellow with age you can kind of see that occurring there and it's very interesting it looks like it's occurring in the center and then kind of moving towards both the base and the apex at the same time it's really cool uh, this is a cylindrical uh fairly cylindrical look you could, i guess you could also say clavate with that one on the left uh, these are sheathed in slime when young and they have a central attachment to that cap. And they grow up to about three inches high and a half inch thick. There's a very companionate mushroom on the left hand side there. It is, this is a, these are mycorrhizal with larch as you would expect from that name. They are terrestrial. They are fairly gregarious if you find them. These are found late summer through fall. They're good to eat. I have never actually found this mushroom. I'm, I'm still looking for it, but it does grow here 
Uh, the slime disappears by maturity. I'm guessing that's another reason why this one is more um, looked for among mushroom hunters. And then these are for intermediate mushroom pickers. Here's a look alike alert for you. Hygrophorus speciosus left. I put in for most of these mushrooms, um, I usually put in a search for Cortinarius and then the color. And if I see something popping up that has a widespread distribution, I'll just stick it in there. There are Hygrophorus spe or Cortinarius species, sorry, that are very, very poison or it's just not known how toxic they are or if they're toxic. But when Cortinaria species are toxic, they can be fatal. So since there are so many occurring in Saskatchewan, if I do see a whole lot coming up, I'll just include Cortinarius as a possibility there to look out for. And we'll talk about Cortinarius more in the web cap section. Uh, so something to look out for. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, I know that uh, these are not the most desirable mushrooms, but uh, they're good mushrooms to know about and maybe it will uh, entice you to take a risk and try something a bit different. Uh, so this is the Mushroom Wizard. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and have a great day.